Dave looked like he enjoyed that, and Zookas looked like he had a lot of fun in the kitchen. Up next, we introduce Kit for a dough and his black cognac cheesecake. Today on Neighborhood Chefs, we are here with Kit. So, Kit, hi, how are hi. you? Hi. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, right now I'm a bachelor student at Monroe College where I'm studying health service administration with a minor in coding, which is medical coding. Mm -hmm. And also, um, I'm also a writer, singer, so I'm actually doing too much of everything right now, but that's, that's a little bit about me, and I've been cooking since I was four. Oh, wow. So what are you making for us today? Well, today I'm making black Hennessy cheesecake with, um, with spiced black caramelized apples. So we're going to get started basically starting with our crust first because usually what I like to tell people is usually the way I start is the blooming effect which I start from the middle and work my way out. Mm -hmm. But because being that you know I want people to kind of get the grasp of how to do it we're gonna start as brown soap would say from the bottom up. Mm -hmm. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start from the crust and work our way up to, this, to, um, to the topping. Mm -hmm. Okay so could you pass me that bag please right there? Sure. We're gonna take these cookies and we're gonna put it in the bag and what we're gonna do is we're gonna smash these bad boys up. Take the food, please. Thank sure. you. And then, you know, take your rolling pan, just start smashing them in. And you know, sometimes you might get little chunks here and there, but that's okay. Like I said, you just beat it until you get into a like in a powdery form. So just like so. Okay. See, nice and easy. You know, we ain't hurting nobody. We're going to go ahead and we're going to easily just roll out. See? Makes it easy, see? So now we got some melted butter, which we're going to mm -hmm. add in. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're going to add some vanilla extract. Mm -hmm. We're going to add some brown sugar. And then we're going to take some cinnamon sugar. Just give it a couple of sprinkles. Then you're gonna take your, excuse me, I'm sorry. Then you take your fork, and then you just kind of mix it around until it becomes like a crumbly consistency. And today we're using vanilla wafer cookies because everybody uses mostly um, graham cracker crust, but I decided to try something a little different. So we're gonna just do this. Could you pass me that pan right there, please? Sure. Now, this is your spring foam pan, and it's already been lightly buttered with a, with a non-sticking spray pan. And you just pour it in, like so. Mm, doesn't it? Mm. And then, you know, you just kind of mix it around just a little bit, you know? Just kind of, you know. And this is a gourmet cheesecake because I actually make my crust thick enough so it can support the actual um, mm -hmm. the actual um, cheesecake. So since we use this and we're gonna smash it around the edges just so it's flatly even. Now, once that's all said and done, we're gonna place this in the refrigerator for five minutes and let it just refrigerate. Next, we're gonna do the actual batter. With each and every equipment that you see here, everything must be room temperature because with room temperature, it actually makes it easier to combine your ingredients together. So we're gonna start with our cheese, with our cream cheese. So let me move this out the way. Here, like so. Now I use Philadelphia cream cheese. And then you take, you just pop it in there. And then you just, you know, place it in the middle and then you, Give it 30, it's actually 60, which is 30 clockwise and 30 counterclockwise. So you want to kind of have a nice, smooth texture. So, so you do this one by one for each ingredient that you get. Because you know, it, it needs to blend well. So this is what we're doing here. So I'm going to give it a whirl like this. Have a nice little rhythm going, you know, kind of like a boogie on down reggae woman kind of thing going on, okay? So, you know, you know, box your head, do whatever it is that you're going to do, and then you know, stop. Now 
you see how that looks? Isn't that beautiful? Now we're gonna do it for the second one, second and third. So we just pop that in there. And now with your, I use a, a rubber spatula to kind of you know, clean up the edges on the outside so it doesn't stick. Now we're gonna take the last one and do the same thing with that. Now we're gonna do the same thing. do this 30 times going clockwise and you want the 30 times counterclockwise. You want everything to kind of blend very well. And whatever chunks that you didn't get, you just take your rubber spatula and you just go inside and just put it right back in and just do it again. Stop right here real quick. Okay, I want to take my spatula and go on the edges like this. Do it again. Now, next we're going to add in some, some sour cream. It kind of tables everything and kind of brings everything together. So, pretty much, you know, like most like most ingredients, they want to stand itself out, but we're going to kind of mix everything together. So, we're going to take our sour cream, throw it in. Okay, there we go. Put that to the side. We're going to add our condensed milk. sugar. Now this is two, two cups of sugar, so two and a half cups of sugar, so we're going to throw that in. Now what I do with the sugar, being that there's so much of it, I like to kind of slowly mix it in before I actually go ahead and give it the rhythm that it needs. So now, Sugar and everything, it kind of blends in very well. Like I said, there's a little lump of pockets. Because you want a smooth consistency all around. And let's say, for example, when you make cheesecake and you just book the items off the street, I would recommend that you leave it for about an hour to two hours so it can kind of go to room temperature. Because when you start making it right away, you can actually taste the difference. Now, we're going to add some vanilla extract. Because we know a lot of people, they they like to add a lot of stuff, like a lot of vanilla extract or a lot of sugar or if everything is mathematically correct, it will come out superb. I mean, this, this is trial and error because I've been baking this since I was 25 and I'm 36 now, so it really mean but I have to learn the trial and error, what works, what doesn't work. So you want to kind of keep it very simple and just follow your soul. What a lot of people don't understand, you shouldn't have to really stick to a recipe so much, but you know, just follow what your soul tells you, and then you work from there. Now, <laughs> for the final ingredients. Now you want to take a sniff of that. I can smell it from here. Oh, you can. <laughs> Okay, I can't. This is this is a quarter cup of Hennessy, mm -hmm. black Hennessy. You just throw it in there. Then you know you just ah. Uh, Doesn't that smell the okay, You actually smell. But when you bake it, you really can't tell because alcohol actually evaporates very easily. So, but it, but you can actually taste it in the food if it's done right. But now, with alcohol, if you want a lot of alcohol, I would recommend that you go as far as maybe three quarter cups, not anywhere near a cup because it will become stale. And it's not really good when you put too much alcohol in your, in your desserts. Now, what 
I do here. Oh, and I forgot to add the eggs. Shame on me. So let me just grab these eggs real quick. We do one by one, so there's three of them. So we actually... Now you're going to go for your last egg and batter. That's pretty much how you make your batter. How you make your back. A foam pan, spring foam pan again. Beautiful. Now, what you want to do is you want to pour this in nice and easy. So, now with the crust, it's going to hold all that's here. Now, I already have a waterbed pan in the oven that's ready for this. So, we're going to actually go ahead place it in the oven. Okay, now the reason why you want to put it in here so it can cook better. Now you want the water to reach up to the middle of the pan. See, when it reaches to the middle of the pan, it actually will cook not only the cheesecake, but the crust as well. So we're gonna leave it in there and we're gonna let it cook for at least 45 minutes to an hour. Now, thank you. Now this is my spiced black apple caramelized apples that we're about to do. Now this is nothing but apples, cinnamon, sugar, and some Hennessy. Now I want people to understand that when it comes to Hennessy, you don't want to overpower what you're doing. Because when you overpower your food, it will leave a, a nasty taste in your mouth and that's not what you want. You want them to kind of enhance, to kind of bring out more flavor that you already have. So what we're going to do now is we're going to actually caramelize the apples. So now, I have a skillet over here with, with some ham. We're gonna go ahead and place everything that's in here into the skillet. So as a matter of fact, we're gonna do that right now. So that's how we do it, nice and easy. You wanna pour it in nice and easy. So now you have brown sugar, and you also have some heavy cream, because you, you want to caramelize the apples. So now we're going to throw some sugar right over the apples. So nice and easy. Because with the natural fruit juice of the apples and the sugar, it's going to start to glaze over. So just like so, I would put it on and let it do what it naturally does, which is going to start glazing in a few minutes. And as you can tell, the sugar is already taking effect. And this is the mixture of the, um, the black Hennessy and the cinnamon and the, and the sugar that has already been put together. So I would actually marinate for, over, for about an hour or so to kind of give it the, um, the kind of flavor that it needs. And I start with a very medium to high flame. So it can go ahead and pretty much start to caramelize sooner and quicker. But then once I start adding the other stuff, I'm gonna slow it down and let it naturally and slowly cook itself. Because once you add, like for example, the heavy cream, it, it brings out the gold part of the, of the caramelization. So then after you caramelize everything, then I throw in the brown sugar and then just pretty much let it cook yourself down for a few minutes and then set aside and then we can have dessert. Mm -hmm. Now if you take a closer look, you can see it's starting to brown. Because oh, yeah. apples 
you know, if you leave it out long enough, they naturally turn to ground, they naturally ground themselves. Mm -hmm. So all we do is just actually helping them to kind of speed the process up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna add, we're gonna add some, some heavy cream. Mm -hmm. so cheesecake is very delicate to me. It's not hard, but it's delicate. Mm -hmm. So you wanna kinda make sure that everything is well organized and well coordinated. So the next thing is it's like you see how it's starting to golden already. Mm -hmm. You want to kind of keep an eye on it because you don't want it to burn. Mm -hmm. and gentle because apples do tend to break if you push them too hard. So that's why it's good to use a rubber spatula and a wooden spoon because a wooden spoon will probably tear it up. So you know that's starting to starting to car caramelize by right. Mm -hmm. so before you know it, you're gonna have a sticky good mess to eat. Once it starts doing that then it's almost ready. This is what you want to do to make sure that it's ready. You want to take your spatula and you want to just go around to make sure that it starts to clean. Nice and easy. Then you turn it off and then you set. Let it set for a few minutes and then you turn it back. Now, everything is done. So this is what it looks like. Now, wait till you see the crust because, I mean, the crust is thick. Now you can see nice and easy and you just kind of jimmy that through and voila. Now this is cheesecake. So now, would you like to try some? Would you pass, pass me the spatula? Right. Now, are you ready? Yes. You ready to try some heaven? Yes. Now, see how it cuts nice and Okay, nice and easy. Okay, there we go. I know, but I actually, because what, what I usually do is after I make a cheesecake, I freeze it overnight. So that it, okay, let me take your fork. Okay, there we go. Now, doesn't that look good? Now let me give you some caramelized apples to go with it. Okay. Oh, do you? Yeah, it's good. It's really good. I tried the apple that with it. It's really good. I told you, I'll, I'll make you something that will slap your mama. That's fine. That's ridiculously good. Mm, thank you. Very, very, and very, very good. 
there you have it. Black hand sea cheesecake with spiked black caramelized apples. Thank you very, very much. You're Bye. welcome. Thank you for having me. No problem. Wow, that cheesecake was delicious. It's a favorite on social sites all over the internet. We hope you enjoyed all of our recipes. And to find out more about our recipes, go to ivychannel.tv slash neighborhoodchefs. If you think you or anyone you know can get down in the kitchen, email us at neighborhoodchefs at ivychannel.tv. Here's what's coming up next time. Next week on Neighborhood Chefs, we meet Wendell Baker. Plus, we attend a cookout with Lacey Tyrone Barnes, a.k.a. Brother Chef. And finally, we meet Eric Stewart. That's next on Neighborhood Chefs. Well, that's our show for now. Until next time, I'm Ariana, and we hope to see you in the neighborhood.